Welcome to Biology Lab Orientation. I'm really hoping that this video is going to help you become a little bit more familiar with how we're going to run this semester, what the course expectations are, uh, so then once we get a chance to meet in person, uh, you guys know exactly what's going on and we can hit the ground running. So first of all, I'm Dr. Bowen, uh, and we're going to spend the next 16 weeks together um, in lab, either virtually or actually in person, um, making sure that we can reinforce some of the same concepts in lab that you guys are learning in lecture. So if we go through the next few slides here, and these slides are available to you guys in Canvas, and we'll take a look at Canvas together as well. Um, the first, maybe most important thing is understanding when do you come to class? And when do you stay home and work on virtual exercises? So this is a blended lab. This means that part of the material you're gonna get online and part of the material you're gonna get in person. And so it's really important to make sure that you know what is expected of you, when you should be in class, and when you should be working at home. So um, at this time, you should have already received an email from me if you had signed up for this course um, prior to this video, uh, indicating which group you're in, either Group A or Group B. E. Um, group A is going to attend lab on odd weeks, and Group B is going to attend lab on even weeks. Those weeks where you are not in lab, you're going to be doing the virtual exercises on your own. Um, I really expect attendance to be mandatory, meaning you signed up for this course, it's a blended course, you should be on campus um, uh, during your allotted time. So I'm going to take attendance, um, but we will talk about some um, COVID-related concerns. These are also in the syllabus. Um, if you have any questions, you know, my door, my, my email box is always open. Feel free to open that line of communication um, and, and ask any questions you need to, to ask. Uh, once you get in class, please be on time. Uh, typically, I open the lab door about five minutes before class starts. And then per the fire marshal code, I actually have to close the lab door five minutes after uh, class has started. So you have those sort of five minutes grace period um, to get yourself into the lab classroom before the door closes. Once it closes, it's locked. So the only way you can get in is by knocking. And, you know, then those of us that are in, on the inside get a chance to decide whether we want to let you in or not. Um, so make sure that you're on time. I really expect you to participate. A lot of this semester is going to be individualized. Um, you might be working at a table with one other person. You might be sharing some equipment, but we're really trying to keep everything as distant as possible um, just because of the COVID-19 pandemic and keeping you safe. So you're going to have a lot of your individualized um, materials and solutions and equipment that you need um, as, as much as we can provide for you. Uh, I do expect you to come prepared, uh, meaning that you will have your ma lab manual ready, uh, printed off or brought in a digital format so that you know what you're doing for that day. Um, I will give a little bit of a pre-lab lecture, but from there on out, it's pretty much going to be your time to complete the lab exercises um, and I'll be there to assist. So if you read the lab manual before you come to class, uh, that's a really good way to familiarize yourself with the material, make sure you know what you're doing um, in class that day. If you have to miss a lab class for an excused reason, uh, you have a training at work that you can't get out of, they're going to fire you if um, if you don't attend, you have um, you know an email that you can send me, some documentation from um, your supervisor, something like that, um, or school-related travel, um, not that anybody's traveling these days, um, or you know you're sick, you got a doctor's note, um, let me know and I will do my best to make help you make up any of the material that you missed. Um, COVID-19 related. Uh, so pretty much the way that um, we're going to handle this is if you have any, any COVID-19 related concerns, I'm going to immediately ask you to email the Dean of Students. Um, they are doing a phenomenal job of making um, uh, or addressing student concerns as quickly as they possibly can. That's their number one priority. Um, so to contact the Dean of Students, this is in the syllabus, it's dos at colin.edu. Should be a pretty simple email to remember. Um, 
I want you to email them with any COVID-19 concern that you have. So for example, you go to the grocery store and you're like, this, this lady was not wearing a mask and she was standing over in the produce department and looked at me funny. I don't know what to do now. Um, that's fine. Email the DOS. They will help you. Or if you're like, I've got a fever and I've got a dry cough. Should I come to class? email the DOS. Um, they will help you understand what is the next best step for you to make sure we keep you safe and so that we make sure that we keep the rest of those around you safe as well. Um, so if anything comes up, email the DOS, and then shoot me an email and say, I have a COVID-19 related concern. I've contacted the Dean of Students, and I'm just gonna say stay home until you real uh, you have some sort of real plan for the DOS on what the next steps for you are going to be. Okay, but if you have other questions, by all means, let me know and I will help you sort them out. Um, for any unapproved absence, right, you just flake out on lab, decide not to come. Um, I'm sorry, you're gonna miss out on pretty much everything that we do um, you won't get a chance to make that up. Um, but for approved documented absences, um, I will help you make up the material. If you have to miss a practical, this is pretty serious. Um, and definitely you need documentation uh, signifying the reason for why you have to miss the practical. Um, and the only way to make that up is to, t to take a cumulative practical at the end of the semester. Um, you really don't want to do that. So um, do everything in your power that you can. Switch around your work schedule to make sure you have the ability to take your practical. Um, if you're sick, you're in the hospital, obviously. Don't worry about it, and we will sort that out. Um, your practicals are going to be online. They're going to be proctored using Honor Lock. You'll have a two-day window to take it. So it shouldn't be too difficult to find some time in your schedule um, to make sure that you get that completed so that we don't have any um, attendance concerns in that case. Okay, um, so you need to know what you need in terms of materials for the virtual part of the course and also for the in-person part of the course. Um, so the virtual part, you are going to have to purchase access to our virtual lab platform. You can consider this kind of like buying a lab manual for, for lab. Um, if you purchased a lab manual, a physical lab manual from the bookstore, please return it. You're not going to need it for this course. Instead, you're going to use that money to um, purchase access to the McGraw-Hill Connect Virtual Labs. To do this, there are two ways. I think you can buy an access card from the bookstore. It's probably going to be a little bit more pricey from the bookstore. Um, or your other option is just to buy it directly through McGraw-Hill. Um, so once we go into the Canvas tour, I'll show you where the instructions are to get access to the McGraw-Hill Connect Virtual Labs. And in those instructions, um, pretty much it walks you step by step on how to get access. And in that process, um, you'll simply pay for access to, to the virtual labs. All right, so that's for the virtual part. Um, for the in-person part, on campus, these are materials that you are going to need for your very first on-campus day. This might be the first week, this might be the second week. Does not matter if you are planning on attending lab on that first day, which you need to do because you get safety training that day. You can't attend any other labs without that safety training. Um, and so if you miss it, you have to do all these extra safety training um, assignments. You don't wanna do that, show up on the first day that you're supposed to be on campus. But these are materials you have to have with you. I cannot let you stay in the lab unless you have all these things. So you're gonna need a face mask. And that's kind of universal, doesn't matter where you are on campus, if you're in a common place, you have to have a face mask completely covering your nose and mouth. You're gonna need safety goggles. These are going to be indirectly vented chemical splash goggles. Let's take a look at some examples. What is approved and what is not approved. So on the left hand side here, you have the uh, approved versions of these chemical splash goggles. You'll notice that they have vents, but the vents are covered. This is to make it more difficult for any chemicals to get into the inside of the goggles. Your eyes are a little bit better protected. You cannot have safety glasses that do not contact your face all the way around. 
um, on the very bottom of this slide here, you'll notice that these goggles look very much like the goggles on the left, except these guys just have holes on the side, um, and so they're directly vented. That is not acceptable. It is very easy for a chemical to get into where your eyeballs are um, and potentially cause some damage if you're wearing these. So make sure you get the right goggles. Uh, you're also going to need gloves. This can be either latex or nitrile gloves, does not matter. Um, you can find them at the bookstore, pharmacy, Amazon, um, etc. I might recommend buying them not from the bookstore. Um, I bet they're going to be more expensive there. Um, seek other options. Uh, and then you need a lab coat or an apron. Uh, I sent out an email with some examples. Um, these can be, you know, kind of canvassy fabric. They can be disposable lab coats. Um, they can be vinyl or plastic um, lab aprons. It's kind of up to you, whatever you feel comfortable wearing. All of these materials, so the safety goggles, the gloves, and the lab coat and the apron are available from the bookstore. Um, so if you want, just to make it easy for yourself, buy it there. They have the materials that we approve, um, and you should be good to go if you get them there. But again, you can get them pretty much any place these days. Um, and then lastly, you're going to need a copy of the lab manual, either a digital version or a paper version. Um, it's kind of up to you, depending on whether you have a printer or not. Um, I think that using a paper version is a little bit easier because you can actually write on it, answer your questions, um, etc. But we will not provide that for you. You don't have to pay for the lab manual itself, but you do have to make sure that you have a copy of it um, with you in lab. And I'll show you how to access that once we get to the Canvas tour. Okay, what are you going to wear to lab? Um, so in terms of footwear, this is very specific. You have to have shoes that encompass your entire foot. No part of your foot can be exposed. Uh, so some examples of things that are unacceptable for lab, Crocs, flip-flops, sandals, uh, ladies' flats are not acceptable. Toms are even not acceptable just because they don't cover the top of your foot. So best bet for you, wear your sneakers that lace up all the way to your ankle. I know you don't want to think about boots right now when it's 90 degrees outside, uh, but boots are also a really, really good option for you. In the wintertime, though, boots are going to be fantastic. All right, what are you going to wear? You have to um, make sure that you are covered at least down to the knees. I prefer long pants. Uh, but if you have to wear shorts or a skirt, make sure they cover you past the knees when you are sitting at your bench. Uh, you have a little bit more leniency here if you have a full lab coat that will cover you all the way down to the knees. And also, it's a really good idea to have some sleeves, either short sleeves, long sleeves, doesn't matter. But again, you want to be as covered as possible. So no midriff shirts, um, no spaghetti straps. Um, make sure you, you have that extra protection. You want to make sure that you don't have anything dangling. If your hair is really long, tie it up. Um, no long necklaces, things like that. And then once we get to lab, we'll talk about contacts. Um, contacts are not recommended in the lab. Yes, you're going to be wearing goggles, but you know that's not a 100% foolproof way to protect your eyes. If a chemical gets in there, you're wearing contacts. Your contacts kind of seal that chemical to the surface of your eye, um, which it very readily will absorb chemicals and um, can be damaged very easily. Uh, so we're asking that you do not wear contacts to lab or your glasses instead. Um, this is a lot to remember, you know, on top of figuring out which days you're actually coming to lab. Uh, so my suggestion to you is, um, much like keeping a gym bag in your car, when you go to the gym, you have all the things you need, uh, for your workout, keep a lab bag in your car. You know, just take a scrubby pair of jeans, a t-shirt, some old sneakers maybe, uh, throw them into a bag and forget them in your trunk. This way, you know, if you are coming to lab and you realize you're in flip-flops, um, and you're thinking, oh shoot, uh, Dr. Bone's not going to let me into the lab, which I won't with flip-flops on, you can just simply go to your car, change your shoes, um, and you are ready to go for lab. 